Hello everyone, this is Saurabh Navangul and I have come back with another video on invoice extraction with AI Builder in Microsoft Power Apps. Now I have done two videos already which show the power of AI Builder and especially when it comes to even dealing with invoices spanning over multiple pages. So in that what we had done is we created an AI Builder model uh, based on the form processing model and we defined one collection wherein we trained the model with a set of invoices then tested it and then deployed it and then finally in the second video I had uh, used the same model in the Power Apps app to show the extraction of the invoices for multi-page invoices. Now in this video I am going to show a couple of interesting things. First things first we will look at adding a collection to the existing AI Builder model. Okay, so yesterday we created, I mean, in my previous video, which was about yesterday or day before yesterday, we created that model and uh, it has only one collection. It had only one collection. And now we will look at how a second collection was added. And then after the collection was added, uh, I will also show you an interesting experiment that I did that within the collection itself, I did some tweaks to the invoice template and um, you know it was still a part of the same collection so we, we are testing the performance of that as well so I'll show you you know what I what I'm trying to say here in the demo okay so we will go to power apps make.powerapps.com I am already in here and this is the model that we had which is demo invoice extraction I will just click on this model now I will not spend time creating the collection because that is something which I already showed and taught in the previous video. So if you haven't had a look at that, I, I request you to have a look at that video in detail. It's Those are lengthy videos, but they'll clear all your doubts in terms of getting started with this sort of invoice extraction using the AI Builder. All right, so here into the model, I'll click on edit model here. And now it'll take me to the interface where I can actually plan to edit the model. So editing could be anything. It could be adding more templates for training. It could be adding more collections or, you know, tweaking the existing trained documents and so on and so forth. Right. So there you go. So this model already has fields defined, as you can see, and tables we, we've seen yesterday here. Okay. So line items three, line items two, and line items one were the tables for the multi-page setup. Um, I'll not change anything here because the invoices will still extract the same stuff. I'll click on next. <clears throat> and while it loads, okay, there, there you go. Now this is what we saw in the previous video, the test logistics um, collection. Now I have added a second collection called vendor org. And as you can see, I have fed seven documents in this, okay? So I will not get into the model right now because it's already done and the steps are the same as we did last time for the test logistics model. Okay, but I will just show you these invoices and what I have done. So this is a set of invoices coming in from a different vendor. Okay, so we will have a look at that template now. So as you can see, I have used seven documents and I will show you why seven documents. Um, of course, it could be instead of seven, it could be 10, it could be 20, but my seven documents work pretty well here. So I'll just show you one sample. So let's assume that there's another vendor which is called vendor org and they send me the invoices in this format. Okay. In this layout. So as you can see, the layout has pretty much similar fields like any invoice would have. So the invoice number, invoice date, um, the payment terms here, then the line items table here with the description, quantity, rate and line total. There's a subtotal, there's a tax value, and then there's a total at the bottom. So far, so good. It's pretty simple, right? So to, to kind of train my model, I used four documents of this same format, okay? And when I say same format, I will show you what that means. So if I, I use this test, I need one, two, three, and four, okay? So I won't open all those documents, but I'll just open the fourth document to show you that it is still the same format as you can see. So here on the left, you have the date, then you have the invoice number, and then you have the table, and you have the payment terms here, just above the table, and then you have the totals. 
okay so this layout is uh, exactly what I have used now so first four documents were this layout that you just saw and then I've created another five documents here with a slightly different layout okay so when I say slightly different layout what that means is let's say this vendor has been sending me documents in this exact same layout okay but you know the for some reasons they end up changing some fields on this layout itself okay so for example in the newer version of the invoice template that they may have let's say the invoice number goes to the left and date comes to the right and um, payment terms position and location changes so that is exactly what I'll now show you so I'll open this test INV 11 okay now as I told you right so if you compare these invoices so this is let's say the modified template that they are using which is very much based on the previous template that you see here okay so here in the previous template date is here on the left and then you have the invoice number on the newer template it is just number here as you can see no there's no invoice it's just no and there's a date here so then the number has shifted to the left so date and noise number have swapped their positions then as you see other things remain the same but hey where's this payment terms right so is it missing oh no so there you go it is not missing it is here at the bottom okay so in this new template that they have uh, you know the payment terms is at the bottom instead of being on the top above this line items table which was in the previous invoice here right so here you had the payment terms date and invoice number and the newer version you have the payment terms here at the bottom then you have the number on the left and date on the right so what happens so what I have done is I have trained this within the same collection itself so so my collection has this template as well as this slightly modified version of the template right so that is what was used so I you what I did is since the model needs a minimum of five documents what I did is I used four documents of this template with the date on the left and then three documents which is 11 12 and 13 to train this template which is number and date number on the left date on the right and payment terms at the bottom so that is how I have used those seven documents to train the model and that's it all right now what we will do is I'll just not ch change anything here so I hope you've now understood what I'm trying to do now what we will do is we'll straight away head to our app okay so I'll just open my app and we will now check what the results are so the beauty of this is as you could see as um, you know is I don't have to define a separate collection for small changes so essentially I'm still dealing with the same vendor and he just has possibly a revision of his invoice document is what we saw with some small tweaks so I have maintained those in the same collection okay so this is my app we will run it I'll click on analyze so all this uh, so I have shown you this app development in the previous video so if you haven't already watched that I do suggest you go and watch that now as I said I had used invoice 1 2 3 4 11 12 and 13 to train this so I, I'll use invoice number say 6 for testing I'll upload invoice number 6 and in the meanwhile I'll try to open it here as well so we can actually check for the results so test invoice 6 okay it is still analyzing right and I think this this invoice is pretty straightforward and it should do a decent job and there you go the results are out first let's check the results so vendor name vendor org as you can see here perfect invoice number 2020 underscore 2 that's right you have the invoice date as 15th September 15th September 2020 correct payment terms as 25% immediate payment terms is 25% immediate fantastic then you have invoice total as GBP 870 GBP 870 correct and then at the line items table back of stationery and a diary 
and the line total is 500 and 350. Backup stationery, diary, 500, 350. And of course, the rate and quantity are also matching. So it's done a fantastic job here, okay, which is pretty straightforward. Okay, and as you can see here on the left, okay, it's, it's showing this blue, but here you can see some red. So it's showing these reds and it is, I'll just zoom in a bit, and you can see the confidence level is 0% here. Okay, so while the confidence is 0%, it is not a good level of confidence to have, but even then it has still done a very good job of extracting the correct data for the table. Okay, and uh, this confidence level will increase when we feed in more documents to train the model, I believe. Okay, so this was successful, right? Now let us look at the modified version and uh, let's upload that as well. So I will click on analyze and then as I told you, I have used 11, 12 and 13 to train the model. So I will, let's say, use the test invoice 14 or 15 to test it. Let's let's go with what 14 maybe, yeah. Okay. So I am now uploading the 14 invoice and you know now the number will be on the left, date will be on the right and we will have payment terms at the bottom as you can see here, right? So this is the invoice that is now trying to analyze and extract data for us and there you go. So I'll just open that invoice as well to test it and that was invoice number 14. Okay, let's do a comparison. So vendor name is Vendor Rock, right? Invoice number is 8845-45. This is the one, fantastic. Then invoice date is 29 June 2020, fantastic. Then we have the total as 800 pounds, 800 pounds. We have payment terms as within 30 days of invoice date and payment terms of within 30 days of invoice date. This is also correctly extracted. And then we have the line items table, which is notebook and Philips headset, 50, 700 pounds. So notebook is 50 pounds, Philips headset is 100 pounds, quantity is one and seven, and price is 50 and 100, right? So this is also done a fantastic job, right? And as you can see, again, it's given the confidence of 0% here in red for the line items table here, which possibly would improve when we fit in more documents, but otherwise, you look at the beauty of this now, where this AI builder shows its power, right? So we've changed, we've swapped the positions, the number and date, but it is extracted based on what we what we have trained it to do. So if there are further revisions of the invoice and if there are subtle differences within the invoice in the same for the same vendor, then you need not define a separate collection for every invoice, but you might as well just put it into one collection um, and uh, save some collections for more a number of vendors. So let's say you have about 100 vendors that are sending you invoices, then you can define one collection for each vendor and um, use your build your AI builder model accordingly. So this is the beauty of it and uh, it has shown some real good results and the accuracy is also great here, right? And let's also quickly run another test for test invoice 15, just to be double sure. Okay, I will click on analyze and upload that invoice. As you can see, this invoice is being uploaded and it's got four line items here. I'll just open that invoice as well here. All right. So this is invoice 15 that I have. And uh, again, this is from that modified template with the number on the lay, uh, left, date on the right. And mind you, you know, I can try and show that possibly, okay. So here, there are certain you know, changes in terms of the position of the objects as well. So let me just try to open and show. Okay. Right. So I'll just check what invoice has the position change. Possibly. Yeah, there's a slight change in the length and um, you know slight position in terms of the text being left or right and the spaces so you know it, it manages to capture everything pretty well okay it's really smart enough to extract the invoice and there you go so we'll check the invoice number 
invoice number is A B and five three four. That's right. Date is fifteen June twenty twenty. That's correct. Then we have payment terms as within fifteen days of invoice date. That's correct. And the total is five nine zero zero. There you go. And then we have four line items again extracted correctly, but here it's showing in red. Not a problem. But it's done a fantastic job. So that's uh, all about it. I wanted to show you, you know, the power of AI Builder and how it can be leveraged to deal with multiple collections and even deal with some subtle changes in invoice layouts from the same vendor and the way you can configure it and use it effectively in your invoice extraction use cases. That's all for it. Thank you so much.